Hey everyone, welcome to All Things Iceland. It is Jules and I have an awesome guest today. It is Sharon, who has dual citizenship from Germany and the United States and who had been living in the United States but recently moved to Iceland with her pets. And this is a fascinating topic because a lot of people ask me about this mainly because in Iceland, there are, there are a lot of rules regarding bringing in animals, and Sharon will definitely be able to break this process down today, uh, probably way better than most people because she has several pets that she brought, <laughs> so she can give you all the deets. So thank you, Sharon, for coming on to share your insight. Yeah, definitely. No problem. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. And just for people to know, if you're going to be visiting Iceland, I just have to get a disclaimer out of the way. I do not recommend bringing your pets. I mean, it's just the process no. is not worth it. <laughs> so, like, just, just <laughs> FYI, this is for people who want to move here. And of course, if you're yes. just curious about what the process is like, just definitely number one thing to point out. <laughs> so, okay, Sharon. So before we jump into though the process regarding your pets and bring them over, what inspired you to move to Iceland? Um. Well, my boyfriend is Icelandic, uh, so that is the short answer. Yes. The longer answer is last year I found out that I have dual citizenship uh, through my mom. So nice. it was a fun discovery, and I was like, all right, that's it. I'm moving to Europe. And I was all set to move to Vienna mm. and have a layover in Iceland because uh, I have a group of friends here that I've known for several years um, that we met my first trip here like mm. seven years ago uh and then I you know one thing led to another <laughs> and I started dating one of my friends and then you know we figured uh instead of doing long distance we would just I changed my destination nice so, you never know where life will take you come to Iceland and exactly. you never leave you know yeah. so. <laughs> people are so friendly here yeah absolutely and you've been here for a very short period of time so far Yes, about two months. Yeah. So how has that been for you in terms of settling in or feeling like, you know, this is your new home? Yeah. Uh, honestly, it's been pretty easy. I think um, for the most part, I've been really mentally prepared just for a whole year I was planning to move anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and I was planning to move to a city where I didn't know anyone and it was really going to be restarting mm -hmm. just for that sense of adventure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I had a core group of friends already, um, a really strong support system, which has been so helpful. And then, yeah, I just keep meeting people. Mm -hmm. And it's really nice, too, because they're mostly Icelandic citizens. So, mm -hmm. you know, those relationships are going to stay, um, right. which I think is a problem kind of a lot of expats might face is just that a lot of times your circle is other foreigners who mm -hmm move on so yeah definitely I mean it's it's beneficial to have both but yeah. in terms of like integrating into society like meaning cultural things that Icelanders do and things of that nature like knowing exactly. people who were born and raised here makes a huge difference in your experience yeah. Yeah. okay and first of all I have to say that I'm sure a lot of people are like oh my gosh like she literally just got dual citizenship last year <laughs> <laughs> or yeah. found out, you know, like what a lucky break in terms of freedom yes. to live in Europe in different places like that. And so was exactly. it just that your mom, like, can you just talk a little bit about that? Because I'm just curious about how yeah. you found this out in the first place. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, yeah, essentially I was like, I've always seen myself living in another country. Like, that's mm -hmm. just something that I've always envisioned for myself. And you know, next year I'm turning 30. So <laughs> at some point I was like, well, if I'm going to do it, I either have to do it or I need to just accept like this is where I'm going to be. And mm -hmm. it's not that I was unhappy with where I was or anything like that. It was just, uh, you know, that who I see myself uh, being is someone that lives in another country. So I figured, yeah. um, start researching that and everything and I was like you know like my grandparents live in Germany my mom is from mm, Germany okay I should just start looking at that and I read like literally a sentence that was just like if your parents are German when you're born you have dual citizenship even if they're not 
in Germany anymore. Mm. Uh, and I was like, hold on a second. <laughs> and I asked my parents about it and both of them had no idea. They were like, really? <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> okay, your mom's like, oh. I was like, isn't it just? <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. So I don't speak German. My mom does. And she uh, naturalized. So she no longer has German citizenship, only oh. American citizenship. So it's kind of funny because she speaks the language. I don't, but I have the citizenship. She doesn't. <laughs> yeah, that is fascinating. And also interesting that Germany would allow you to have the citizenship even though your mom gave up hers. Yeah, well, and it's because uh, if she gave it up before I was born, mm -hmm. then I wouldn't have it. Right, but yeah. because she was still a German citizen when I was At born, essentially yeah. those choices are disconnected, even though I was like 10. Yeah, yeah, realized. that's super interesting. Okay, yeah. well, just a background that I was not aware of in terms of before we literally started recording. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it's really yeah, interesting no, to add this in. It's interesting. Yeah. I mean, okay. I definitely suggest people looking into their cultural backgrounds because you never know. Like that mm -hmm. stuff really does follow. Yeah. Um, I, I know of some people here from the UK when the whole Brexit thing was going on. I mean, it's still mm -hmm. going on, but in terms of like actually yeah. breaking out of the EU, they were like, hey, I think I have, you know, citizenship from this other uh, part of mm -hmm. Europe, my grandparents or something. And they were also able to get citizenship so they could be like EU yeah. citizens and still stay in Iceland and stuff. So yeah, you yeah. just never know. So good point. Ancestry <laughs> can yeah. come in handy in many different ways. Exactly. But uh, in terms of bringing over your pets to Iceland, yes. so how many pets do you have? Let's start with that. Yeah, well, if I do a pan, they're over. They're actually all conveniently. That's my cat. That's my nice. little dog. And that's my big dog. Okay. So they're all on cue for the camera. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're always, uh, they're always like this you know, a few feet away from me. So yeah, that's sweet. Yes. Um, so you three. Okay, got, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I have three. You have three. Okay. Pets. And in terms of process, so what did you have to do before even like, yes. you know, bringing them over to Iceland? What was that like? So it is a three to four month process, no matter where you're from. Um, before you plan on moving. So you really have to work backwards from when you want to be here. Uh, mm. And actually like the exact dates you're going to be here, you have to work backwards to figure out all your vet visits. Um, and that's the same for the dogs and the cat. And mm. essentially it all like, yeah, it's kind of the same. Um, so the biggest thing is rabies. Um, mm -hmm. And there's, two different types of countries there's uh like a level one and a level two essentially and really the only difference is whether they need their rabies shot or need it to be updated um when you're planning on bringing them mm -hmm. so man i should have <laughs> i have all the documents and everything i literally have a stack of documents about this wow. thing okay. that's just like keeping tabs on everything but yeah, there's essentially a timeline. Okay. Um, and basically like 180 days out, I believe it is, they need to have their rabies shots. Um, 30 days after that, but not prior to 90 days. No, is it 180? Maybe it's 120. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> it's literally like, yeah, so it's a long process, basically. Yeah. Um, but the biggest thing is the rabies shot and making sure that first of all, they're updated okay. and then, um, they need to take a blood test that is prior to 90 days. Uh, but not longer than like 30 days after, uh, mm -hmm. they got three shots or something. Okay. So there's like a, yeah. Interesting criteria that has to follow this. It's strict... a lot of time. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. I also will put a link in the description and or show notes for people uh, for MAST, yeah. which is the Icelandic yes. veterinary animal stuff. <laughs> like I'm not remembering exactly what the name is, but the people yeah. who take care yeah. of this to make sure that you're, you know, all, they outline everything and they also mm -hmm. have like information regarding cats, dogs and all that. But like this as a yeah. firsthand experience, I think just kind right. of brings it to life for people because mm -hmm. it's not like you can just 
like you're mentioning, move to Iceland on a whim with your pets. Like this is, yeah. I mean, you can't move to Iceland on a whim if you're not a citizen of the EU, EEA or EFTA countries anyway, but this adds an extra layer. Right? And I'm like, yes, definitely. And was it ever in your mind, like, you know, for moving in general that you wouldn't bring your pets or was it always like, I have to bring my pets. So this has to work somehow. Yeah. Yeah. For me, it was, I have to, um, you know, I had them, my cat and my big dog are both like eight or nine years old. And then my mm-hmm. little dog is five years old and they're just family to me. So yeah. yeah. They're your fur babies. It's sweet. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. so you got all your paperwork <laughs> together before yes. coming and then obviously like on the plane and stuff. Um, mm-hmm. Was that much of a hassle regarding like getting them checked yeah, in? Yeah. So, I mean, just a little more of a backstory, I guess, because um, yeah, but timing aside, um, the biggest, the biggest thing is having a good relationship with your vet um, mm, okay. and making sure that they're understanding like what you're doing and really looking over all the documents because all of these vet visits, there's probably about five or six vet visits that they had to do and go through. Um, and, you know, you're looking at the documents and it's the names of vaccines and everything. Mm. And stuff that I really relied on the vet to be like, oh yeah, this is what you need. This is the timing we need and everything like that. Yeah. Um, okay. So having that good partnership with them is very important. They actually fill out the final form that you need to submit to MAST. Okay. Um, and there was a bit of a hiccup with that mm. because, uh, and that, so that final form can only be submitted between five and 10 days um, before you leave. Okay. So basically you're like, I really hope everything is good because five to 10 days before you're set to leave, they could come back and say, sorry, we don't accept it. No. <laughs> they can. Yeah. So, and that actually did happen because there was a miss like, it's a pretty extensive form and one of yeah. the dates was wrong and it was the date that the blood what the results of the blood test came back as mm-hmm. opposed to when the blood test was drawn and it was about a month difference and mm. mask came back and said sorry based on the form that you submitted we cannot accept this and that was day six so i had one day to talk oh, to them no. and get the vet to redo that entire sheet ah <laughs> resubmit it and like that was nice because my boyfriend was able to actually call mast yeah and talk to them and be like this is the situation and they, they were completely understanding they're very reasonable people yes but the paperwork has to be in order yes yeah i mean i so, can definitely like also knowing icelandic i mean just be honest like just to be honest yeah. Like being able to call and to get a sign to, to explain, it does also make a difference there. <laughs> being like, exactly. You know, so yeah. 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 So yeah, that was, that was a huge thing. And then the other part of it is you have to book your quarantine, mm-hmm. uh, which we'll get into. And I'll talk about that process. Um, Gus is just looking out the window. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So you have to book your quarantine basically way in advance um so they only have like three days out of the month that they accept pets in so you have to book your quarantine before you even book your flight um and then the flights for the animals they don't let them book that until a month out so basically i've booked the quarantine and reserved their space um without knowing for sure that they would get a flight on that day and just like three days they had three different days that they could fly in um and i actually had a situation (laughs) where uh so i'm from just outside of chicago i had them Mm -hmm. booked on a flight from chicago and two days after we completed the booking and i could finally breathe a sigh of relief that i had something they canceled the flight no (laughs) yeah and there was no other flight out of chicago so i had to book a flight and rent a car to new york oh what you drove to new york i drove to new york oh my god i was determined to bring these animals i see yeah good for you i also like yeah and i 
didn't feel comfortable putting them on a layover because I was mm-hmm. just, I felt bad enough putting them on a flight in general and I didn't mm-hmm. want to put them on a flight to have them go through a layover just to be in like a holding area and I don't yeah. know. So yeah. for me, the logical, you know, the U.S. mentality of, oh, yeah. it's only yeah. 15 hours. <laughs> Road trip with your two yeah. dogs and a cat. <laughs> yeah. And it went over surprisingly well. And that gave me a lot of faith in them actually being able to take on the flight. Because I was like nervous about the car ride and then everything. But no, yeah. it turned out. At least- you have a lot more control, I guess. Like if they need to use the bathroom and whatever else exactly. when they're in the car. So yeah. And the flight and from New York, is it, how much longer is it from Chicago? Is it similar? Time? It's only a half hour shorter. Okay. Which is surprising because it's so long, but yeah, it's about, yeah. it's about five hours, I think. Um, yeah. That's not bad at all. And then like five and a half from Chicago. Yeah. So. But yeah, that was all quite an experience. Yeah. Um, I see. Okay. Yeah. So again, I mean, just like the timing and the communication. Um, the other thing I will say and add, uh, Gus is a very large dog. I can kind of really show you now. Uh, oh yeah. Okay. Boy. <laughs> um, Pretty dog. What kind of dog is that? They're all mutts. Here. Okay. Hence the username. Yes. Yeah, by the way, uh, you can follow Sharon, or if you want to reach out to her about this process, Mutts on a Mission, which is on an Instagram account. So feel free to do that. Thank you. Um, Yeah, yeah, so because he is so big, um, I actually had to use a shipping company. Um, So, (laughs) And essentially, the role of the shipping company was very specifically to book the flight or the okay. dog uh-huh. uh, and basically use their license to ship him. However, I did all of the legwork. Yeah. So okay. you're, you're essentially paying them just for their license. Um, I will say that they, and this is specifically for the U.S., and I'm not sure it might apply to Canada as well, so I'm not positive. Mm-hmm. Uh, but ultimately, I ended up using the shipping company for all three of them because with them being cargo, uh, mm-hmm. that meant that I technically didn't have to be on the flight. And at that point, mm-hmm. COVID tests were still a thing. And I was also paranoid that if I got COVID, at least they can still go because they would have to be in quarantine for two yeah. weeks. Yeah. Interesting. Um, so that was just kind of a precaution that I went with. But um, there is the option of booking the smaller animals as either special baggage, which means they do go under the flight in the temperature controlled cargo area, mm-hmm. but essentially the same exact place that the, um, them being booked as cargo where they would go. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's cheaper, I guess, but you also have to be on the flight. Yeah. Um, okay. They did suggest that I could also um, book the cat as just like a special carry-on, but I didn't want to subject everyone to potential screaming or yeah, <laughs> it's just like an, it's like nobody wants to be next to the crying baby and yeah, you know not yeah. next to the crying <laughs> cat either because it's all it's also like what do you do for yeah. this cat right? <laughs> like, I, I I had no idea how he'd react. Honestly, fifteen hours in the car, he was totally quiet. So. Yeah. Maybe it was fine. Who knows? Yeah. My mom takes her cats to Houston to visit my sister from New York City. And mm-hmm. she has like this calming collar for him. His name is Lulu. Yeah. And I've that, heard of that, that. Yeah, that seems to work. I mean, he does. She said that there's been like once or twice where he had his little like Wah! type of thing. But <laughs> but for the oh, most yeah. part, he's been really quiet and super chill. So Nice. I guess it could just really vary because she's she does not allow him to go into cargo space. She she even will buy a seat for him if she has to. Like that's how yeah. much she's uh, adamant about him being with her on the flight and being able to make sure he's okay. But yeah, yeah I can understand. You know, like <laughs> the screeching I, cat on the like red eye. Yeah, well, and especially gosh for five hours. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I I think part of that was also at that point my stress levels were just like I just need yeah. this out of sight out of mind yeah so, totally okay um, well okay 
But yeah. you didn't, I'm guessing you didn't get COVID and it all worked out well in terms of you being able yeah. to be on the flight. Yeah. I, okay. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> I actually ended up catching COVID and it wasn't serious, but I caught it like two weeks after I got here. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. But you're, I was like, you know welcome. what? It's fine. I'm here. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And after, like when the flight's over, does, how does it work? Does mass come and get them immediately or do you have yep. to do something? Okay. No, so I did not get to see them after I uh, dropped them off at Iceland Air Cargo in New York. Mm. Um, that was it for two weeks. Um, wow, okay. Yeah, so they land at the airport and immediately um, the vet comes and looks at them, the vet um, from MAST, so it's mm-hmm. like a government official. Yeah. Um, they come and check them out, just make sure that they're okay, um, don't have any signs of infection or anything like that. Um, and then the quarantine facility comes and picks them up. And once they pick them up, uh, they give you a call and say, Hey, we have them just so you know. And I will say that throughout this entire process, MAST, like the vet at MAST and, uh, the people at the quarantine facility, Mm -hmm. incredibly personable, like nice, really nice. Like I, I think they're just used to people being very concerned. Yeah. Um, because they constantly like even just booking the quarantine um I was like do you mind if I get like pictures of the facility and stuff like that and they're like yeah of course like this is where we put them like they can be together if they want um because obviously all three of them kind of are uh, buddies yeah yeah (laughs) um they're a family so so they know (laughs) um and then they were giving like Every time I emailed them and I said, hey, just like checking up on them, they started calling them the siblings after a while. <laughs> That's cute. Yeah. And like describe their personalities a bit, which made me feel really good that yeah. like it's not just like they're in a small cage or something like they're actually being looked at and taken care yeah. of and stuff. So And being seen as individuals, which is kind of interesting. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And like, like I said, like they were using like emojis, <laughs> <laughs> which I would assume, you know, that the people who run this are probably animal lovers and probably have animals themselves. So they understand exactly. that anxiety. Yeah. Yeah. And okay. I mean, I was asking questions like, what kind of food do they get? Like, yeah. do they, you know, also can you things. provide food for them or is that not allowed? Yes, you can. Any food that uh, comes with them. I, and I just like tape some food to the top of their kennels but any excess food cannot leave so mm, okay basically anything that goes in with them like that's it's getting thrown out after uh they're done using it for your animals okay so that goes with like if you put a bed in the kennel or something like that oh. which i did <laughs> okay they all had very nice beds and uh, you know those they're- get destroyed because they can't be cleaned Wow. Um, yeah. But they do okay. give the kennels back, which is helpful. Yeah. That's good. Okay. And the two weeks, because I, I'm pretty sure in the past it was longer and they yeah. shortened this time. Yeah. It actually changed just in like May of 21, I think, mm-hmm. um, from one month to two weeks. Yeah. Which is a huge difference when you think about it. Like, it is. And yeah. before that, um, and I don't know when this changed, but it used to be three months. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but they had to be transported all the way up north um, to like an island. Um, (laughs) Yeah, like they took it and not that they don't take it super seriously now, but um, yeah, they would land at Keflavik and either fly them or drive them um, all the way up north and then take them to an island. Yeah, wow. Yeah. I think it's also just super fascinating in so many ways to me about the fact that like they're probably the process has gone pretty smoothly. So they're like, okay, we can now lower it to a month, lower it to two weeks, right. you know, and who knows yeah. if it will stay at that or maybe even be less time. But yeah. uh, I think it in Iceland, it's just good for people to know that like when there are animals here, like horses or sheep or anything that do leave when they're alive. (laughs) Um, Because obviously there's plenty of animals that leave who are no longer living, but um, they can't come back. So like Icelandic horses, for instance, or, you know, when they go out for to compete in competitions, they usually get sold 
to yeah. somebody in out of the country because they never are going to be able to come back home, which is really sad <laughs> to think about. But it's all to protect the other animals from getting diseases. And in this case, it's the same thing. It's a protection for other domestic animals and potentially even people, but livestock especially, um, from getting diseases in the country. Yeah. Okay. And then the pickup. So how did, well, I mean, you know, when you saw your pets again, were they like, yeah, thanks for <laughs> sending yeah. us away <laughs> to camp or something? Uh, yeah. <laughs> how were they? They kind of, I think the one that surprised me the most, so I have obviously three. I have Gus, who is my big dog, um, Pippi, who is my little pipsqueak, yeah. um, <laughs> and then I have Darwin, who is my cat. Darwin, um, okay, it's cute. Yeah, and... Gus is just his personality. He is so attached to me. Like I leave the room and he's following me. Like he doesn't care where we're going. He's just like, yep, I'm in. <laughs> um, Pippi is by far the most independent. Where I don't see you. Hey. Sorry about that. Okay. <laughs> it happens when you have that. <laughs> Hang on. Yeah. <laughs> so her animals have started to howl or bark a little bit so sharon just had to go and see about calming them down which is not surprising we're doing this virtually so it is bound to happen when you have a few pets in the house <laughs> that they will be a little bit rowdy at times or maybe something outside who knows <laughs> They were being so good for so long. <laughs> yeah, I was surprised. They made it like 25 minutes. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Usually they'll see a dog and they'll be like, uh, hold on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're not used to that yet. Um, where were we? Uh, about picking them up and that how Gus yeah. is so attached to you. And yeah. yeah. Gus is very attached. So he was very excited to see me. Uh, Pippi was just like, all right, let's get out of here. Like, she just walked right past me. <laughs> she was like, I'm done. Maybe I'll forgive um, you. <laughs> yeah. And she's very sweet and everything. But when she's in a new environment, she's very much just like looking like, you know, she's a little terrier. So, yeah. um, <laughs> and then Darwin was not happy with me and mm. he just like, um, I don't know, like he would follow me all around and just like be really clingy mm. uh, and very upset if I like walked into another room and like, like going to the bathroom, like closing the door, <laughs> not happy. Yeah. <laughs> just like meowing on the other side. Oh. But, you know, that lasted probably for a week and now he's good. So okay. they adapt. Um, I thought Gus would be the most difficult, like with the move and everything, but he was just, you know. He's just as easy going as he always is. So nice. Okay. Yeah. And are is there is your cat Darwin an outside cat or does Darwin no, normally he's stay not. inside? Okay. Yes. Uh he's named Darwin because I don't think he would have survived. Oh no! Uh, After like the Darwin Awards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when I when I first got him, um, like I had a third floor balcony, like I was in an apartment on the third floor. And I had a balcony and I was like, this is great. Like I'll sit outside on my balcony with my new cat. Yeah. I opened up the door and the first thing he did was like, hang off the balcony, like <gasps> up to his elbows oh, and just like no! slowly started like sliding forward when I grabbed him and I was like, what? <laughs> so yeah, his name is kind of. <laughs> it's a joke yeah. basically on mm -hmm. his, um, yeah. Uh, over, I mean, uh, op optimistic view on. His ability to live <laughs> that yeah. high up if he were to fall, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> he just constantly thwarting his attempts. <laughs> but you know. it's like you made it this far, cat, and he yeah. didn't learn by now. <laughs> exactly. And now, like, yeah, we're on the second floor, and I'm like, uh, you can't go on the balconies. I haven't let him on the balconies yet. So, okay. <laughs> All right. So, do you have any like tips for people or anything? Um, honestly, like the biggest thing is like doing the research that goes into it. Um, 
the mast website is huge um iceland air looking at them um Mm -hmm. and yeah just kind of seeing how the shipping and everything would go there are two quarantine facilities Mm -hmm. um to look at one is about 15 minutes away from the airport uh which is the one that i use yeah and then there is another one that is like two hours west i think Mm. Okay. Um so that one you got to choose far. which one you wanted. You get to choose, but it's Okay. Yeah, definitely uh worth looking into the drive time and everything. Mm-hmm. Um and that was another just really helpful like having my boyfriend be like, "Oh, this is where this is." Yeah. That's silly. Let's not choose that one. Yeah, it's like, hmm, we have to yeah. put them through more traveling." Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> okay. Um so yeah, just being diligent on timing and everything. Um and I do have a document because I actually wrote something up for someone that was looking into it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I could send that to you if you want. It has some links. Um, just yeah, I mean, I could, I if used. people go to your Instagram, then they can yeah. like reach out Absolutely. and get it directly. So they don't have to worry about going through me because, you know, yeah. I, I try to get to as many messages as I can, <laughs> but it doesn't yeah. always work every day. And so you could be yeah, the direct okay. resource. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Even better. Yeah. Um, but yeah, okay. I, I think that's pretty much it. Just having a good connection with your vet and staying on top of timing and everything. And yeah, it's a lot of moving parts, but ultimately it's like you have all this stress for months and they only have the stress for one day. So yeah, exactly. You know, when you look at it like that, it's worth it. <laughs> True. What about when it comes to buying food for them? Like, do you find appropriate food here? that you yeah, like had in the U S or anything. Yeah. Yeah. And that was, again, something that I looked into. Um, mm-hmm. and they actually have a lot of brands like from the U S um, mm, yeah. I'm not sure if they're in Europe too, but, mm-hmm. um, personally like Arcana, uh, Royal Canaan is here. Those are mm-hmm. just a couple of popular brands. Those are the brands that I use. Okay. Um, so yeah. Great. And have you had any vet visits since you've been here? I have not. Okay. Knock on wood. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully nothing ever happens. But I mean, yeah. it, you know, Iceland in general is usually more expensive. So it's potential that that would exactly. be, you know, yeah, an additional cost. But that is, you know, part of having a pet as well. So, yeah. Okay. Great. Well, Thank you so much, Sharon. Um, and if people who have questions, of course, like I mentioned, you could follow her, but you can also put them in the comment section or write a comment like on you know the show notes and I can just make sure she has the links in the video and everything else uh, in order to answer questions there for individuals because I'm pretty sure there's always something that comes up that pops into someone's mind, especially when it comes to the fur babies. I feel like this is such a big topic for so many people just to understand or you know they have questions about their own animal and how that would work for them but I do appreciate you coming on and just kind of sharing this part of it because I had no idea that first of all like the timeline that you mentioned how strict they are with that and that it can really come down to the wire which is intense so I'm glad it all worked out and yeah thank you thank you yeah All right. Thanks everybody for watching and I'll see you in the next video and or podcast episode. Bye.